Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to show how to set up a Kafka cluster on OpenShift or Kubernetes. This is a highly available Kafka cluster uh, using persistent uh, volumes. So Kafka instances run as Docker containers inside uh, OpenShift cluster. For this, um, you need to check out my repo github.com Debian master OpenShift Kafka. If you want to see how to set up a OpenShift cluster on your local machine, uh, please go to my previous video that OCP 2.0 uh, local setup. All right, let's assume that you have a running OpenShift cluster and let's go ahead and then create a Kafka cluster. So I've done this already. Um, I have OpenShift instance running on my machine. The default user for logging in is uh, developer and developer. Okay. All right. So let me go to the CLI and then log in there. Okay. So the first step is we need to clone this repo and then move to that directory. I'm already inside this directory and then let me pull the latest changes okay uh, the latest on my machine and then log in as system admin on cli right and then we need to use uh, so this kafka cluster uses uh, uh, root privileged containers so we need to uh, tell openship that this is going to be a privileged container uh, the easiest way that you can run privilege containers on OpenShift is this command ODM policy add SCCT user for any UID uh, and any namespace we are going to run containers as root containers or uh, privilege containers All right so uh, I gave this privilege now I'm going to create a new project called Kafka and then after that we need to create a uh, volumes persistent volumes in kubernetes or openshift uh, persistent volume can come from various uh, sources in this uh, example i'm going to use host path uh, persistent volume so it is going to use a directory on my local machine as a persistent volume for the cluster right uh, so let's go and create that so this has created five percent volumes or if we see OC get PV you can see five percent volumes and those are all available and after that um, so this is for the zookeeper percent volumes similarly we need a uh, percent volumes for Kafka as well I'm going to create that so I got percent volumes for Kafka as well uh, with different directory names these are all created inside the current directory okay um okay once we have the first and volumes we need to create per, uh, volume claims so these claims will be used uh, as part of the zookeeper and also kafka deployments All right so i'm going to you can see first and volumes for kafka and also zookeeper and all are available now and each one is taking about 100 megabytes of data Next thing is I'm going to create person volume claims. Uh, one for zookeeper, zookeeper and one for Kafka. So these claims are important uh, for for accessing the person volumes. So person's claims are basically like your tokens for accessing the volumes. All right. So I have created my person volume claims. Uh, for zookeeper and also kafka and also zookeeper both okay once i have this i need to create the zookeeper service then the zookeeper deployment so this will be like pod highly available zookeeper cluster 
and the next thing is to create the Kafka cluster. So that's going to read all the YMLs, this YML and this YML, this YML, all these YMLs, and then um, does OC create and all of those files. All right, so let's do that. So it created a broker, Kafka instance, and also a pet set. So pet sets inside OpenShift or Kubernetes are like, um, you can actually get some predictable names for each containers. Okay. Right. So once we, if we do OC get parts, you can see I have a Kafka instance running and also a, a Zookeeper running. Let's put a watch on that. Let's look in the UI. So this developer user doesn't have any privilege for uh, looking at the uh, Kafka namespace. So I'm going to add, give access to this user. For that, you can just copy this. Add policy, OC ADM policy, or OC policy add role to user. And uh, I want to give admin rule privileges for user called developer on namespace called Kafka. Okay, now now I can see Kafka namespace here. Let's look why uh, some of them are failing. Um, give it some time and then all should be coming up. Keeper and also Kafka are both running. These are actually same containers. Uh, they are the chest group seen differently because of the service name can group these two as one. So this is Zookeeper and this is Kafka. Okay. All right. Um, once we have that, let's go and test this. Uh, for testing this, I'm going to create a client part where we have all the binaries. So I've created a test uh, part and this is a client part. Look, this is a client part. All right. Let's let's just search into that. Okay, so we are on on one terminal. We are inside the client test client. Let's do the same thing in another client. So from one client, we are going to consume the message and from other client, we are going to produce the message. Client client doesn't mean uh, this part, which has all the shell scripts for Kafka. Okay. All right, so let's do that. Uh, from the first one, I'm going to create a topic. Test one is the topic. Uh, it retained my old persistent volumes and then showed that I have a test one already there. So you can ignore that. And let's read it from the beginning. Okay. All right. From the other terminal, let's go and produce some content or messages. And then control C. And you can see the messages are appearing on the terminal one, the where we have the consumer. All right. So we are able to successfully produce messages and also consume messages. The next thing is let's scale the cluster. So scaling the cluster is pretty simple. All we need to do is OC edit pet set and Kafka, and you can scale that. Um, you can scale the cluster. All right, so lip replicas. and change these replicas to 4 and this should automatically scale. 
only thing that you need to keep in mind is we need to have open persistent volumes and also persistent uh, persistent volumes for Kafka and also persistent volumes for Zookeeper. Both should be available. Only then it will be able to scale. Okay, that's the only thing that you need to keep in mind. So let's go and uh, save this. This will automatically scale the cluster to four. You can see it scaled to four now. All right. So it's pretty simple to create a Kafka cluster on OpenShift and which is also highly available. Thank you very much.